Hello friends, today our subject is labor intensive techniques, its definition and examples. So what is labor intensive? The term labor intensive refers to a process or industry that requires a large amount of labor to produce its goods or service. The degree of labor intensity is typically measured in proportion to the amount of capital required to produce the goods or services. The higher the proportion of labor cost required, the more labor intensive the business. So understanding labor intensive. Labor intensive industries or processes requires large quantities of physical effort to complete necessary task. In labor intensive industries, the cost associated with securing the necessary personnel outweigh the capital cost in regards to importance or the volumes while many labor intensive jobs require low levels of skill or education. This is not true of all labor intensive position. Advance in technology and workers productivity have moved some industries away from labor intensive status. But many remains labor intensive industries include restaurants, hotel, agriculture, mining, as well as healthcare and caregiving. Less developed economics as a whole tend to be more labor intensive. This situation is rather common because low income means that the economy or business cannot afford to invest in expensive capital. But with low income and low wages, a business can remain competitive by employing many workers. In this way, firms become less labor intensive and more capital intensive. Before the industrial revolution, 90% of the workforce was employed in agriculture. Producing foods was very labor intensive. Technological dependence or developments and economic growth have increased labor productivity, reduced labor intensity, and enabled workers to move into manufacturing and more recently services. So special considerations. A prime example of a labor intensive industry is the agricultural industry. Jobs in this industry which is closely related to the cultivations of foodstuffs that must be picked with minimal damage to the plant as a whole such as fruit from fruit trees are particularly labor intensive. The construction industry is considered labor intensive as most of the required work is hands-on. Even with the use of certain tools, a person must be involved with the vast majority of work. Many positions that are part of the service industry are also labor intensive. These positions include those within the hospitality industry and the personal care industry. Labor cost encompass of all costs necessary to secure human capital necessary to complete work. These costs can include funds directed toward base wages along with any benefits that may be given. Labor costs are considered variable while capital costs are considered fixed because labor cost can be adjusted during market downturns through layoffs or reductions in benefit. Labor intensive industries have some flexibility in controlling their expenses. Disadvantages of labor cost in labor intensive industries include limited economic upscale. As a firm cannot pay its workers less by hiring more of them and Suspectably to wage forces within the labor market. Now trade 
capital uh, related so industry labor intensive technology promises and barriers so technology evaluations in developing countries are discussed with exact emphasis on labor intensive appropriate technologies historical technologies current technologies of reduce scale the adaptation and improvement of indigo bonus technologies and the need for research and development in labor intensive techniques are presented the technical factors in road construction are investigated as they relate to labor intensity special emphasis is given to evaluation of design standards location criteria and scheduling it is possible to combine labor intensive techniques where appropriate with more conventional capital intensive methods the susceptibility of the various uh, constructions components to labor intensive application is briefly revived or reviewed finally the barriers to the adopt adoption of labor intensive techniques in road construction are presented these include technical barriers psychological barriers bureaucratic barriers educational barriers managerial barriers and the general tap of research development financing marketing and distribution systems to support labor intensive alternatives labor intensive alternatives are but one in a continuum of technologies developing countries will probably retain capital intensive techniques for primary row projects labor intensive techniques are probably best suited to the construction of feeder and rural development roads appropriate technology during the past whole decade the terms appropriate technology labor intensive technology have become one widely used and the number of publication addressing their numerous aspects has grown the term appropriate technology can vary broadly in its application so is currently being applied not only to the developing countries but also to western europe and united states also philosophically appropriate technology implies that the decision makers should have the sophistications to devise plan evaluate and select from a range of te technical solutions to a given problems furthermore it suggests that their selection should be based on a broader range of criteria then has been true in the past appropriate technology advocates the use of greater number of economic indicators then is addressed in the traditional economic feasibility study and emphasizes the need to weigh appropriate technology could be expressed as the provisions of technological solutions that are appropriate to the economic structure of those influenced appropriate to their ability to finance the activity appropriate to their ability to operate and maintain their facility appropriate to environmental conditions and appropriate to the management capabilities of the population there are numerous criteria and appropriate technology challenges all of them not only the engineers technologists and economics but also the sociologists and anthropologists historian and others need to become involved in the evaluation and selection procedures of technological decision making in an extensive review so to maximize product output to maximize the availability of consumer goods to maximize the rate of economic growth to reduce unemployment to encourage regional development to reduce balance of payment deficits to pro provide greater uh, equity in income distribution to promote 
political uh, development and to improve the quality of life. And although conceding that the list is still far from comprehensive, we add the following. So, to reduce the population flow to urban centers, to provide an adequate food base for the local or national population, to be as consistent as possible with the indigenous social structures, and to preserve the indigenous culture continuity and heritage also. So it is obvious that these criteria are themselves to in conflict. This is the real world situation where no solutions te 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 technical or otherwise will improve all factors impacted by a project. The strength of this approach is that it can identify both negative aspects and those that can be improved. This should lead to more rational decision making because the positive and negative aspects can be compared as trade offs and presumes, however, that the criteria and the, re, uh, and the importance of the each can be agreed on. Paradoxically, paradoxically this advantage may also be a weakness and it may fail at time because it cannot be all things to all people. Considerable delay which may in the end of the disadvantage, disadvantages to all may be encountered in the extensive analysis and evaluation required. The decision making becomes very complex because of the number of the criteria and uh, involved and the disagreement as to which have priority because of its broad uh, definitional base and one can honestly say that given appropriate conditions may technology from toolless hand labor to earth and satellites can be appropriate. So labor intensive appropriate technology one category of appropriate technology is that of uh, labor intensive appropriate technology for example the remaining sectors of this paper will address such technologies as related to road constructions maintenance in the economic sense these are technologies that look for greater input of labor often but not necessarily unskilled and corresponding decrease in the requirements of capital in investment the obvious advantages of such technologies are the decrease of the number of underemployed and the reduction in foreign exchange also. The underemployment problem is the world need to be documented. Labor intensive te technologies have implications in terms of slowing and migrations from rural to urban areas and perhaps most important of all, in making development countries as self-sufficient as possible in base or basic commodities through rural development. We are not so naive as to feel that labor-intensive technology can completely stem the current migrations from rural areas. No such technologies are likely to be that effective or pervasive throughout any developing country. The emphasis should be the consider labor intensive appropriate technologies as a part of the range of alternatives available and possible to give greater weight to some of the criteria that would tend to encourage and justify experimentations with and implementations of such technologies. The idea of labor intensive technologies, especially as applied to rural areas, goes back to the colonial era. Village industries were encouraged in modern be in India before the 1930s. So, uh, the technology to identify those of moderate capital investments per employee. This led to the development of various intermediate technology groups in Great Britain and elsewhere. This is unfortunate that at least in the United States, the term 
intermediate technology has been uh, superseded by the term appropriate technology and development of labor intensive technology the literature on labor intensive technology is a rapid expanding one these technologies can be developed from any of the four primary sources first there is the revival of older technologies these technologies were used to build the original manufacturing plants and basic infrastructure of the developed countries and where much more labor intensive then is the technology of today the construction of railway boards the american waste is a classic example there are those who feel that reintroductions of such technologies to third world countries is appropriate much of the literature of labor intensive technology both that directed toward economic development and that directed toward a different lifestyle is fundamentally based on these sources which might be called the whole art catalog approach and it has the advantage of being easily and quickly identifiable and having demonstrated success in the past thus it can produce many goods idea at a very low research cost it is often the approach of the institute expert a breed not unknown in this field it has the disadvantage of lack of depth once the initial inventory has been conducted it has a very strong psychological disadvantage from the retransportation research record 749 this receiving country which is being advised to use techniques perhaps a century old it has the technology or technical disadvantages that the tools are no longer manufactured and that maintenance and repair parts that may have been readily available when they were broadly used are not available today one would have to establish a century old productions and technology base to broadly implement such technology where this can be done on a local level with minimal manufacturing and easily maintained tools it can be effective you the technology identified has much sophistications these technical limitations are difficult to overcome this type of solutions should be among the first investigated in any comprehensive research effort but it should not be over emphasized or become the primary intellectual base the second source of labor intensive technologies is to adapt current technologies to a similar scale for implementation in a receiving country so this is done daily as new plants and technology and techniques are introduced even substantial manufacturing plants are often not the scale that would be built in the developed world the adoption of smaller lightweight tractors as opposed to heavier commercial ones is an example a third source is the adapt adaptation and improvement of uh, indigenous or indigenous technologies the fact that the populations concerned have existed within their geographical locations and physical environment for centuries if not uh, is often overlooked the methods and technologies developed have uh, certainly been successful in those conditions thus the folklore method of doing things may form a fundamental base of knowledge from which to develop improvements and modifications also furthermore any new techniques or tools must be introduced into the social and uh, cultural environment that exist so that's the end of the video my friends if you like my video please subscribe my channel thanks a lot for watching